let's start with a portrait of the doctor as an artist. A love of art being something Neville Nucky developed after being challenged by his daughter to attend a life drawing class. Because I had to keep a straight face, I wasn't going to be outmaneuvered by an 18 year old. I said, I see nudes all day long, why would that worry me? So Neville Nucky started drawing and got the taste. He went to the Florence Academy of Art School and learned Renaissance portraiture. They had anatomy classes because they have to understand how you get all the bumps around the face and the body, so that means understanding anatomy. So there's a direct correlation between understanding medicine and, and drawing. But wait, there's more. For the mind, Nucky collects and reads each year's Miles Franklin winner, which can require courage. For the body, he runs marathons in places like Boston. Tenacity. For the soul, he swims above the sharks to Rotnest. Faith. And he sails. But most excitingly, he climbs mountains. If I took you from here to 5,200, plonk you there, you'd die. Thanks for that. <laughs> All the big ones, Alps, Andes, Caucasus, Himalayas, even Antarctica, places most of us leave safely in the brochures. And we have done some climbing where you have to go ropes and that sort of thing. But we're very cautious about the people who we go with. So we go with people who are very conservative and safe and roping up and all that sort of stuff. So that does give you a, a certain amount of danger, but it's sort of controlled danger. And we try not to go too far out on a limb. <laughs> there's no doubt each day of trekking is hard work. And there's a accomplishment of being able to do multiple days of hard work to get to a summit of a mountain. And then when you get to the top and you look over a mountain range and you're on top of all those mountains and it's just like a huge high. Neville Nucky can be fairly described as a Renaissance man for the 21st century. And all the more fairly when you know that his day job is neurosurgery. Negotiating a patient's brain is nothing, if not a challenge. But as a mountaineer, swimmer, runner, reader and painter says, neurosurgery is also rewarding. If they have a head injury and a blood clot and you take the blood clot out and they live and go home and carry on with their life, that's a very fulfilling you know, occupation. Neville Nucky's story gets even better when you learn that if not for his mother, he may well have been a jockey like his dad, a three-time Perth Cup winner. My mother really did not want us, or me in particular, since I was a boy, to be a jockey. And she was quite insistent that she wanted all her children to go to university. Mother got her wish. After school, Nucky attended three universities. UWA in Perth, Johns Hopkins in Maryland, and Brown in Providence, Rhode Island. Today, as clinical professor Neville Nucky, he is a neurosurgeon in a fast-changing field. Neurosurgery, from a technical point of view, has just um, uh, changed dramatically with all the technologies over the last uh, 20 years. In fact, if you went from 20 years ago to now, you wouldn't even recognise the theatres. At the Perrin Institute in Perth, it's stroke treatment that exercises the brains of Nucky and his research colleagues. Initially, when it occurs, some cells die in the centre acutely over seven to ten minutes. Then that area of brain death grows over three or four hours and reaches a maximum at around three to four hours. So there's a period from 15, 20 minutes to three hours where those cells are slowly dying. So the aim is to have a drug to prevent them from dying so then other treatments can be given. 
and that gives the public something new from the science lexicon. Peptide. A peptide is just a number of amino acids. Amino acids are the basic building block of proteins. So a peptide is just a small collection of amino acids. A small collection it may be, but peptides are the huge hope for stroke victims. These are the, some of the results from the latest trial with our peptide. Associate to... Professor Bruno Maloney and Nucky are exploring a new class of peptides to limit brain damage after stroke. NA1 at the moment is considered one of the most promising um, neuroprotective agents for stroke and we've consistently shown now that um, R18 um, is more effective than, than NA1. Importantly this was an independent study so it was performed by a lab that was completely independent to, to us. Neville Nucky is adamant that results like this would not be happening without institutes like the Perrin, where translational research is the key. As a clinician, it's pointless doing research if you can't bring it to the clinical arena. So translation means you do something in the lab, find that something works, then um, prove that it works in humans and then becomes routine clinical practice. So what we hope for our peptides is that we found them in the lab and did basic you know, cell culture work, that one day they'll get to the point where we can do a human trial and show that it works and then it becomes part of standard medical practice. That's the ultimate goal of, all, of most medical research. And it's not dissimilar to mountain climbing in the sense that you get to the top and you've achieved something that's hard work and you can talk about it and you can look around and say, yep, I'm on top of the world at this part of the world. So both of them are fulfilling equally. <laughs>